Okay, great. Um, oops. Um, ben, if you see people in the waiting, can you just let them in then while I'm... I will, yep. <laughs> okay. Well, everyone, thank you so much for joining us for um, today's webinar. My name is Zia Yang, and I'm the Outreach Specialist for the Small Business Development Center. Oh, you know, I'm just going to share my screen here quick. Great. Um, I also just want to do a shout out to the um, to Nicolay College um, and SBA for helping us fund today's webinar. Um, they've made it possible for us to offer this program for free uh, for the registrants. And then before I hand everything off to our presenter, just wanted to do a little quick PR on the Small Business Development Center. Uh, we are one of 14 in the state of Wisconsin. Um, and really all you want, need to know is that we offer um, free business consulting. Um, and that is for any stage of your business, uh, whether you're starting a business, growing a business, or selling your business. We also have a few um, specialties in our network. For instance, our UW Oshkosh Center has a free digital marketing clinic. Um, so they specialize in just, um, that clinic specializes in just um, marketing um, assistance. We also have a import and export uh, specialist. We actually have one um, here, uh, Mark Spears um, at our center, so. And that's really, that's just really quick. Like I said, it was going to be a quick PR. Um, and then I'm going to hand everything off to Ben. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Zia. And thanks, everybody, for being here uh, on another beautiful night. We had one of these sessions Tuesday night as well, and it was another nice day. So we'll try and end on time and get us out in the beautiful sunshine. It's nice to see a couple names that we saw uh, on Tuesday as well. So welcome back. I'll uh, I will give a little bit of an introduction again, so sorry that you have to sit through that a second time, but I'll make it as quick as I can. So um, again, just really happy to have everyone here tonight talking about uh, online marketing. So um, for the sake of time, we're not going to go like around the horn and do this in front of the whole group or anything like that. But if you're willing um, in the chat, um, go ahead and uh, enter your name, your business or the organization that you're with. And then maybe uh, give us a sense of where you're at uh, as far as like an online marketing status. So are you a total newbie? Are you a super green? Are you a rookie? Are you capable and comfortable? Or is it complicated and something that you just don't know quite how to say? That's OK, too. But um, just give us a, a little bit of a sense of where you're at. And maybe that'll help us all kind of orient each other on uh, who we are, where we're from, and uh, where we're sitting uh, related to online marketing. And while you're doing that, uh, hopefully we can multitask. I'm just going to roll into introducing myself and exclamation and who we are. So uh, exclamation is a um, creative marketing agency that's uh, based out of the Marshfield area. Um, we've got a little bit of a niche in that uh, we primarily serve uh, credit unions, small businesses, and nonprofits. Um, and, you know, I'm just super lucky uh, to work for a company that uh, has a mission statement like um, what I'll put up on the screen here. Uh, as I hit share. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm just really lucky that I get to work for a place that has a mission statement like this that's really focused on doing what you love and helping other people do what they love. Um, so, uh, like I said, we focus on a, a few uh, main verticals. Uh, we're actually owned by Simplicity Credit Union in Marshfield, if you've heard of Simplicity. So, um, kind of an interesting business model started out of a credit union, which is why credit unions are a big part of who we help. But um, because we're a totally separate entity, we can do work for uh, anyone. Um, and, uh, you know, these three verticals that we help really check like big boxes for me personally. Um, I, I love to work for the nonprofits and, um, and you know, even credit unions as a, a not-for-profit financial cooperative, you know, an interesting model in the financial space that, um, you know, provides a lot of similar services to banks, but does it a bit differently. Um, and then small businesses, which, you know, I imagine is the majority of the people that we have here tonight. Uh, I personally was an entrepreneur. I owned a print and marketing company for about uh, a little over a decade. 
uh, and ran that and sold that when we started having a family and needed to stop working the amount that I was. And um, so, but all that to say, I've uh, experienced a lot of the challenges and joys of owning a small business um, and small businesses definitely hold a special place in my heart. I don't do it all alone. I love to be able to brag about my team. I've got an awesome team of people around me that help pull off all of the great work that we do. Um, I'm not going to introduce all of them here or anything, but uh, like I said on Tuesday, I always like to at least get their pictures up in front of people and show that there, there's more than uh, just the guy talking to you tonight that makes all the cool work that we do happen. And we've really got a great team. I'm super proud of them. So, so um, oh, I forgot to update the slide. Sorry. First mistake of the night. Darn it. Um, but let's, uh, so let's erase what you see on the screen there. And uh, I'm just going to put the question out there why are you here tonight and why do you think that online marketing or online presence is important? So, um, you know, again, no pressure. We don't need to go around the horn and have everybody share or anything like that. But um, if there is somebody that is so brave that wants to unmute and share a little bit about um, why you're here and um, something maybe that you're hoping to learn or why you think uh, online client marketing is important, I'd love to hear from you. Otherwise, go ahead and throw it in the chat. I'll pause for a minute just in case there's anyone that's so brave to speak up. I'll talk. Hey, I'm <laughs> Tina Pomgren with Excelling Your Business. Um, I've been in business for 11 years, but I don't actually think I've ever really marketed. I put stuff out there, but I've not um, really done a whole lot of... I do a lot of teaching. I will put out tips and stuff. Just I, So I'm building no like, and trust, but I'm not really marketing to anything okay great well i mean if you're putting tips out there and you're educating um you, you're doing something um and that is a form of marketing or content marketing which we're actually going to talk about a little bit later tonight so um don't give yourself you know such little credit you're you're doing something but maybe there's some other opportunities that you have in the marketing space so yeah cool anyone else yeah hi uh this is mark waldock um I love saying this. At the turn of the century, I was VP of marketing for a real estate services company, and we had hundreds, preferably thousands of, of customers slash clients. Um, now, I'm a very niche uh, business, um, and as I said in the chat, I need, I rent a cabin that's on the water in Eagle River, and I need 14 customers every year, 14 guests, whatever you want to say. I can't use any more because when it gets too cold, the cabin has to close down. Um, and I also teach guitar, mandolin, banjo, bass guitar, ukulele. And um, when I get a student, they tend to stick with me for, for quite some time. Uh, but, uh, you know, I need about five or 10 new students every year. So I've got really small um, uh, needs. Uh, and, you know, if anything is too grandiose, I don't want to take on other teachers. I don't want to, uh, you know, buy other cabins. Uh, uh, everything is fine just the way it is. It's the right size for, for me where I'm at. But um, I'm hoping, you know, the, uh, like I said, it's been 23 years since I, I was in charge of marketing. So I'm, I'm sure mm -hmm. things have changed just a little bit. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think things have changed 23 hours ago, let alone uh, 23 years ago. So uh, the world's moving fast, that's for sure. But thanks for sharing. And sure. yeah, I mean, you bring up an interesting challenge of a small business to, you know, be comfortable with the sweet spot of the size that you're in where, you know, like you said, you don't necessarily want more cabins or, um, you know, a ton more um uh, students or, um, you know, people learning instruments and stuff from you. But also, you need enough to, uh, you know, keep the lights on and keep the business cash flowing and all that good stuff. So, um, yeah, cool. All right. Well, for the sake of time, let's keep moving. Um, if somebody is just itching or dying to say something, um, you can just interrupt me, but I'm going to keep rolling. Um, I, I do ask those questions because I think um, just like, and again, if this is repetitive to the people that were there Tuesday night, I'm so sorry, but I follow a similar flow um, and, you know, the, that flow starts with starting with why, you know, like, why are we here? Um, that's why I asked that question. But as I was putting together the presentation, that's something that's important to me is focusing on, you know, why are we even talking about this stuff? Why are the people that have registered for this here and what are they hoping to learn? And so for me, it's really helpful to develop a statement like this to just keep top of mind as I think about what stuff, you know, we might need to pull together and talk about tonight. So. 
Um, and so this is the statement that I used that just helps, I think, you know, kind of um, uh, put it in words, like the why of why we're here tonight and why online presence and marketing is really important. And, you know, a lot of it really is about um, reaching a wider audience, establishing credibility um, and doing things to effectively engage the people that we're trying to talk to, whether it's clients or potential clients and doing it all in this uh, digital or online space, which gives us a ton of flexibility and freedom um, uh, and creates a lot of efficiency, but also comes with a ton of challenges. Uh, like what we uh, just mentioned too, one of them is um, how quickly things seem to change. So um, what we're talking about today is uh, informed by stuff that's worked in the past, um, stuff that might be relevant and working today, uh, and it's all going to continue to change. Um, so uh, you, this might look a little bit familiar. These are the uh, abbreviated um, sentences that are the objectives that were in the description for the session tonight. Um, I'm not going to read them for you word for word, but um, again, just keeping these objectives in mind, what we're going to try and get to tonight and get through so that um, we're delivering on um, uh, what you all signed up for. And one thing I just want to note um, is that, you know, this, just like the persona session on Tuesday night, all of this stuff takes time uh, and you get what you give. Um, and if all that you get from this session is maybe a gentle reminder to clean up one aspect of your online presence or your website, or you're inspired to try one thing, that's really important progress. We're going to talk about a lot of stuff tonight. Don't feel like um, you have to do it all. There will always be more to do uh, and things are always changing. So again, just don't feel like you need to do it all if you take away one thing tonight. And that's actually a challenge that I always like to put out to people when I'm facilitating something like this is um, write it down, you know, write down one thing. Um, hopefully you wind up doing a whole bunch more, but you know, write down that one thing or you know, reflect on what we talk about a little bit tonight and pick something. Because um, sometimes when you get a whole bunch of information, it can feel overwhelming and you don't know where to start, but just pick one thing to uh, try or improve or start from scratch and go from there. So uh, tonight's going to flow a little bit like this. We're already talking about our why. We've I think we've got a good grasp on why we're here, what we're trying to do. We're going to talk about some concepts and strategies for online marketing. Some, I'm going to the next slide is actually a big list of a whole bunch of them. Uh, we're not going to talk about all of them, and it, and the list isn't all encompassing, but um, I think it's a good place to start some terms you've probably heard or things that you're maybe already doing. Um, and I'll talk about, I guess, some of the top priorities that I would suggest. Uh, we're going to talk about enhancing our online uh, presence and then uh, talk about some client acquisition and engagement strategies. Um, and, you know, we got people of all different experience levels and all kinds of businesses here. So, um, you know, if some of this stuff is things that you've already heard or are doing, um, please, let, you know, let's share. Let's make this conversational. Hopefully we can lift each other up and help each other. Um, uh, but I'll uh, do my best to get through uh, some good stuff that's maybe a little bit more entry level, uh, as well as some next level steps that you might be able to do. So. Diving into concepts and strategies to help um, create that online presence or grow your uh, online marketing. Um, like I said, here's that big hairy list. And, you know, organizations really utilize different marketing concepts and strategies to connect with their target audience, drive brand awareness, and really ultimately achieve business goals, sales, growth, whatever that might be. Um, and by identifying target audiences and creating personas, organizations can uh, tailor their marketing efforts to specific uh, demographics, really ensuring that messages and content resonate with the intended recipient. And, and that's important. Um, you know, and if, if you did register for Tuesday night and maybe didn't join us, go back and watch that recording because we talked a lot about target audience and personas. Um, and that really is a pretty important uh, first step. So uh, tonight's a lot about digital channels and really leveraging those digital digital channels like social media, email marketing, online advertising. Um, that really allows organizations to reach a target audience at different touch points throughout their online journey. And that's some of the flexibility that you get in the online space. Um, each concept and strategy serves its own purpose. For instance, um, search engine optimization or uh, SEO really helps improve organic visibility and website traffic, while social media marketing 
can really enable organizations to engage like directly with an audience or or, or you know a subset of people uh, and hopefully start to foster some brand loyalty. So when we put these things together and we employ a diverse range of online marketing concepts, um, we can really maximize our reach, engage potential customers, and ultimately drive conversions and conversations and create growth, right? So like I said, a lot of um, uh, bullets on the list here. There's a lot of ways to start or to build your online presence. I'm just going to call out a few of them that I think are maybe um, top priorities or maybe a bit uh, more important than the rest. And I mentioned SEO already. I think that that is definitely one of them. And, you know, speaking of change, algorithms are changing every day. Search engines are, um, you know, changing the way that uh, things work all the time. Um, and But SEO really is one of the best tactics to grow your online presence. And the first step um, to showing up online when people are searching for you is to play with, test, or master SEO. And doing something with SEO, I guess, is the important message here. Do something with it. You don't have to be a master of it, but um, start to think with SEO principles in mind and build your site and, um, and your content to all help uh, grow uh, that, that effort. So when I say SEO, if this is a bit of a foreign term, we're talking like keywords, um, you know, and you really wanna do keyword research, um, you want to include internal and external links on your site. So links that are pointing to your own content on your site, links that are pointing out to other websites. Um, we want links coming back to your site, which we'll talk about a bit later. Um, and there's a whole bunch of other SEO stuff that we could talk about um, uh, that could get way down into the weeds. But at the end of the day, if you want to show up on Google, um, there's some things that you really need to do first. And um, creating a Google My Business account is the first step there. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit too. Uh, some really great online tools to help get you into uh, the Google space and search engine space and just be present online. And once you're there, the next step is to be active online. So in order to show up, uh, you have to be active. You need to be putting fresh stuff out um, regularly. And this includes uh, regularly posting to your own properties, like your website and your social media accounts, uh, and hopefully becoming active in other areas as well. So like engaging with your followers or your subscribers on so social media, like actually interacting with them. Um, if there's something that everyone is talking about in your industry, you can use that as a tool to engage in, in conversation. Um, you know, with things like social media um, and, uh, you know, other ways to be out in front of people online, uh, sometimes websites have kind of fallen behind or be seen, have been seen as less of a priority, um, but really th they are an important um, part of the, the recipe to have that healthy online presence and be able to be found online. So, uh, you know, other than social media, one of the first places that people typically are discovered is uh, through their website. And, your website's obviously where you can show off your brand, your video, um, educate people on what you do. I mean, there's so many different tools for creating lead generation and contacting, uh, uh, ways for people to contact you. Um, and there, while websites are, um, you know, again, maybe from time to time get bumped down the priority list, um, one thing that is awesome about them now is that there's more tools than ever to be able to create them. Uh, including free publicly available ones or subscription services. And of course, you know, people that can design them and publish them for you. Um, but, you know, things like Wix and HubSpot and um, Squarespace. I mean, lots of awesome tools out there to help build your own site. And when you need help, there's always help available from either local partner like us or an online uh, resource. So um, hopefully websites aren't scaring anyone away. And if you have one, um, you know, it's something that, you know, there's likely opportunity to improve it. And we're going to talk a little bit about some things about your website that you'll want to keep in mind uh, going uh, going forward. Um, influencer marketing. This is maybe, you know, something that's a bit newer to people. I mean, as uh, social media has been around and new channels pop up and it continues to gain traction, um, this whole idea of using influencers is maybe still a bit foreign to people. Um, but it's it's a really cool opportunity to gain trust, build loyalty, and be seen in a way 
um, that is quite different than the way that people have been marketed in the past. So, um, you know, for instance, if you, as an example, if you sell beauty products, you know, you could, you know, consider reaching or researching beauty influencers, people that, um, you know, have an audience, have a following that um, can educate uh, their audience on your product, um, and you can really leverage their reach to help create awareness for what you do. And at the end of the day, the more often that people are talking about you, the more often you're going to show up online. So um, I'm not going to talk much about influencers for the rest of the night. It's a relatively new space. There are services out there that can help connect you to people. Um, at the end of the day, when it uh, if really anything that we're talking about online or content um, or how to put your business out there, like the first thing is like, it's got to be real. It's got to be genuine. So just, I guess I would say tread lightly if you're researching uh, ways to like dip your toes in influencer marketing, because the last thing you want is somebody that clearly is just faking it or is um, putting their information out there um, or your information out there um, because they're getting a paycheck from you. Right. So, um, you know, just, Tread lightly, be careful, um, but there are some cool resources to connect you to influencers in the area uh, or, you know, further that uh, have a reach that might be beneficial. Last thing I just want to talk about real quick is just being where your audience is. And, you know, again, you know, knowing who your audience is in the first place, developing a persona, um, you know, an important first step. But um, at the end of the day, you got to be where they are. So um, if your audience is on Instagram, but they aren't on Twitter, or, or sorry, aren't on Twitter, um, don't spend the time developing content for Twitter, right? And on the contrary, you should really be focusing on your content and promotion strategy on Instagram then, right? So um, if you show up where your audience is, you'll build a stronger online presence that you know people just can't ignore because they're there all the time. That's something that we know is people spend a lot of time in these places. And if the people you're looking for are there, you should be there too. All right, so um, enhancing your online presence. So, um, you know, I'm going to talk a little bit about websites here because I do, like I said, I think it's still one of the most crucial um, aspects to being uh, visible online, being found by a search engine and being found by potential clients or even existing clients that are looking to grow their relationship with you. And mobile first web design is something that isn't brand new. Um, you know, uh, I, I remember when I first started designing websites for people, uh, making sure that they were just responsive, that they looked good on a, on a mobile device, a cell phone or an iPad or something like that. That was the top priority, like at least make sure that it's responsive so the site changes from the desktop down to that smaller screen size. Now it's actually kind of like totally flipped from, um, I'll age myself a little bit here. I graduated college in 2004 and did uh, graphic web design as part of my uh, education. And, um, you know, we were like barely getting into like designing for mobile devices at that time. It was all about designing for the desktop. Now it is totally flipped. In fact, like when we're designing websites now, we're designing for the cell phone first. We're designing for an iPhone. We're designing for, you know, that mobile device first. And then we'll actually make sacrifices for how the site looks on the desktop as long as it looks good um, on your device. Because as we know, that device is tied to everyone nowadays, right? It's in their pocket and... When people want to learn something, that's typically, you know, or for the majority, this isn't everybody here, but um, the majority of people are pulling their phone out and they're searching or scanning their QR code or whatever. And what they first uh, see needs to look great. Um, of course, the desktop experience should still be great and can offer some additional functionality, which, you know, is nice, but um, using analytic uh, tools and uh, understanding how people are finding you on your website is the, the best way to maybe where your priorities should be and it might shift your strategy a bit um, but the mobile experience definitely should remain a priority because if people aren't using that as their first method to find you they likely will be soon as behaviors continue to change for people that maybe aren't there yet but like I said the majority of people are there for sure so um, and again, lots of great tools exist here to help build your site this way, to think mobile first and build, you know, for the small device first. Um, but of course, lots of other people that um, can help you get there too. And um, something, you know, when, when I talk about websites and site management, especially if this is something you haven't done before, it can be a little daunting or um, 
you can almost feel like you have to give up control to get what you want if you're having somebody help you with that. Um, but you can still get, um, and you should ask for all the access that you need to manage the site yourself, because that's going to be important that you have the flexibility to do that and then trust um, a partner to help you with that. Um, when you, but you don't really need to do it yourself. Um, but it can be a little less scary if it's scaring anyone right now. So, um, so another thing, and I would say almost the most important thing that you could do to enhance your online presence is to create or update your Google listing. Um, you know, and hearing uh, people talk about maybe some of the challenges that they're having today and also just understanding the challenges of small businesses, sometimes like your own stuff kind of sacrifices so that you can do the work that you're doing for your clients. And I can say firsthand, like my, our own Google listing is probably something that can be improved, should be updated. Um, but I think we've at least got some of the baseline foundational work done. But if you don't have one, you should get one. Uh, and what likely is the case is if you don't have one or you don't own it or you haven't seen it, a listing already exists for you because Google has found your business and has published it out on the web. Um, but the information that's there might not be accurate. So it's really important to go and claim your listing uh, and then dig into it a bit and um, you know really update the key information that uh, should be out there so that your business is properly represented, right? And like, I'm talking like the basics, contact information, your location, your hours, your logo, um, you know, like get that baseline stuff updated so that uh, when people search for what you do or, um, you know, ideal case scenario, they've heard of you or somebody said, hey, you should, you know, check out this cabin in Eagle River and they search the name of it the right one shows up and what shows up is an actual representation of your business. You know, and then from there is a whole lot of other stuff you can do that, again, I would say are foundational, but might be like step two, adding photos, um, interacting with uh, people that might leave reviews or are asking questions. Um, those are definitely ways to help, um, you know, show that you're a credible business, that you're active, that you care about what people are saying about you online, good or bad. Um, and, you know, and that's maybe a challenge that some businesses have is, um, you know, we, for most of our clients and for our business in particular, um, if somebody leaves a review, good or bad, we respond no matter what. Um, and I think, you know, if you get a bad review, it, you know, that can feel a little scary. You might, you know, not want to engage with someone or, you know, this might not be a review on Google. It could be a comment on social media or something. Um that's a real opportunity to show everyone else that might see that review or see that conversation that you care that, you know, if you did screw up that you made it right, or that you're going to do everything you can to make it right. Um, so positive or negative engaging with people that are engaging with you is definitely uh, really, really important. And of course, yeah, there might be a line, right? If somebody's just being abusive or, you know, name calling or, you know, just being absolutely um, out of line, that might be time to delete those comments, delete that review and totally disengage. Um, but, you know, that's a pretty extreme scenario. Most people are reasonable. Um, and uh, to show that you're actually interacting with them is um, really valuable uh, and again, good or bad. So I would say like the, the must do's when it comes to your Google listing, first claim it if you haven't, um, create one if you haven't, um, and then make sure your info is up to date, um, add products, add photos, uh, and then uh, start to interact with people that might be leaving reviews or asking you questions. Those are absolutely huge and you're telling Google I'm an active business. I'm a credible business. I care about my customers or my prospective customers. So when people are searching for me, uh, put me to the top of the list. Social media. We could have a week long of sessions on social media. Uh, I'm only going to touch on it briefly tonight. But um, if you're not on social media, there's probably a channel that will benefit your business. Um, you don't need to be everywhere. You don't need to, um, you know, there's eight icons on the list here. There's some that aren't even shown like Snapchat and things like that. Um, there's, there's lots of places that you can engage with people. Just first thing I would just want to make sure is really clear. You don't have to do it all. Uh, you don't have to post every single day or multiple times a day. There are ideal cadences uh, that make sense to put new content out. Um, and it can vary from channel to channel. Um, but like if all that you have capacity for is 
a post a month or a post a week. Uh, do what you can on the channel that makes the most sense for your business. So, you know, this again is where doing a bit of research on your target audience or developing a persona can tell you, yeah, I need to be on Facebook and Instagram. I don't need to worry about anything else. Or, you know, if you're maybe in more of a B2B space, I need to focus on LinkedIn, uh, on LinkedIn. And, you know, sure, maybe I have a Facebook page, but I don't need, need to be as active there. So understanding where you should be is definitely a, a really important first step, first step. But I mean, social media gives you so many benefits from, you know, brand awareness and loyalty to a really awesome opportunity to create website traffic. You know, almost everything that you post should be telling people to take a next step, which hopefully is something like going to your website to learn more, to do a thing, to sign up for something, whatever that looks like. Um, SEO, so search engine optimization is another thing that Google will look for if you're providing updated content, if you're interacting with people on social media. Uh, it's all connected and uh, your website will rank higher. I'm not going to sit here and claim that I have a complete understanding of how much priority Google gives to social media and how that fits into their algorithm. That is a mystery uh, to most of us or almost all of us, but um, it definitely is important and will help grow your ranking. Uh, and it also, like I was saying before, uh, related to a Google listing, uh, social media gives you a really great opportunity to provide uh, customer service or some sort of a uh, customer experience, right? So, um, you know, there's ways to message people um, and to, you know, interact with your content and things. And um, that is a part of your customer experience, your potential customer experience. So uh, lots of opportunity there to engage with people. Um, and again, just another avenue to create social proof and credibility. I'm an actual business. I, the post that you see out there is from, you know, some sort of recent time period. It's not from 2011 when I first signed up for the account and people see that and wonder if I'm even open or not. So, um, and, and to that point, I guess, circling right back to the beginning where I talked about, um, you know, you don't have to be on every channel. You don't have to post every single day. But you do have to like make a decision to be somewhere and then be consistent, um, you know, whatever that looks like for you and your clients or your customers or your potential customers, your audience, they will get it. They'll understand. They'll know like, yeah, I, you know, I usually only see something from them once a month. So if, you know, I go to their page looking for something new or I was curious about something and I haven't seen something for a few weeks and there's probably something coming out soon. Uh, or, you know, if I haven't seen a post from them this week. If you're posting weekly, people will get used to it and they'll understand. Um, it might take a little bit of a learning curve, but um, you'll, you'll get there. But, you know, social media, like any other marketing tool requires time and effort. Not everyone has time and resources to dedicate uh, to things like social media, but um, and there are some things that you learn as you go and you interact with these things to make sure or to understand the value that they might provide to your business. So like Facebook and Instagram, uh, Twitter, they're typically pay to play kind of spaces if you wanna see results. I mean, you can put organic contact out there, uh, content out there, just put stuff out there and um, people will interact with it or comment and share and all that good stuff. Um, but these channels have been around for a long time. Advertising uh, and paid posts are a huge part of their business model now. Um, so like if you really want to see like big results, traffic, heavy engagement, you likely need to, to pay for that. Um, it is still relatively affordable. And you, the big benefit is you get to see lots of great data. You get to see who's interacting with, uh, maybe not down to the person level, but you get to see what kind of people are interacting with your stuff, where they might be from, um, what posts are working, what ones aren't. Um, and that data is, you know, really, really valuable compared to some more traditional marketing channels, which still service space and marketing, but we're focused on online stuff tonight. And then there's newer channels like TikTok and Snapchat and stuff that, um, while like, you know, Snapchat's been around for a while, TikTok is certainly a newer one, Be Real is another one. Um, all of these are like either dabbling in advertising, just started selling advertising, or it's still relatively new to them. So, um, these are channels that maybe create an opportunity to see more impactful results right away because either it costs less or they don't have a super tight algorithm that's giving priority to things that we maybe can't quite understand. Um, so just know that those are opportunities to maybe test, 
see some quicker results or see something more impactful right away. But uh, like everything else in marketing and social media in particular, it's probably going to change uh, in the future here real soon. So um, have some fun with it. Make some decisions. Um, don't get uh, too overwhelmed by it or feel like you need to be everywhere to everyone. Um, and you'll likely see some results uh, pretty quick. So, okay, uh, I'm going to pause, take a breath. Um, I, I know that I usually probably talk too fast. So I'm just going to I'm just going to pause and throw these few questions out there and same rules as before. If you want to throw it in the chat just to get something off your chest, share something that you learned or um, maybe something that you want me to dig into. If you have a question, please feel free. Um, what do you want to hear about next? Any of these things, anything that you want to share, go ahead and put it in the chat or if, if you're brave enough to uh, unmute and put it out there, let's do it. Okay, I guess I'll be the brave one. Um, I get reports from Google on both of my websites uh, every month, I think it is. Yeah. And uh, so that means that's there. Is there a link on those reports that I could click on that would take me to my uh, my Google website? Um, depending on the report that you're looking at, I, maybe, um, but... Um... There, there definitely is a way to get into the analytics side of Google to see not only how your listing is performing, but um, how your site is performing too. So you could yeah, they, they they do provide in those monthly reports analytics. So I mean that's that's interesting. But you know I you you sparked an idea. I haven't touched the Google sites. I, I actually I don't even feel good about what I do with my regular websites. Um, but how, how do I find my website, uh, the Google website? Sure. Like your Google listing, you're saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you, um, uh, funny enough, if you just Google, <laughs> Google my business, um, you'll find the landing page for the business side of uh, Google, which is how listings uh, and, you know, business listings are managed. Um, and if you haven't already claimed it, uh, you, you could also just Google your own business and um, uh, you might need to be a little specific, like add your city name or your address or something like that. And um, likely now your model is a little interesting in that, um, you know, like a, a vacation rental, like the actual cabin might not show up in a search. So that might be a listing that you just need to create. So if you just, uh, like I said, Google, um, Google my business, you'll find that. Um, uh, page within Google where you can add your business um, and then you can build out your listing from there. Um, so it sounds like this is one that either you haven't claimed or you haven't touched or haven't created yet. Uh, all, I've, yeah. all I've done is just uh, looked at it uh, yeah. and said, wow, this is kind of sparse. I was happy they listed my regular website and yep. um you know, and I figured, well, that's good enough. I guess I don't have to do anymore, but I guess you're telling me differently. Yeah, I I mean, if at the end of the day, if the baseline information that you need to uh, see out there, like your website and your basic contact information is out there and accurate, along with things like address and phone number and all that stuff, that that might be all that you have to do. I would say that there's probably a lot more opportunity for you to add photos and some of those next steps that um, will only enhance your listing and will likely result in, um, you know, more views of that listing to start and ideally um, more traffic to your website as a result or more calls, whatever it might be. But I just realized I, I'm not, you know, I have not spent enough time on my, my websites uh, at all. Um, and one of my students is, who was with me for years since he was in middle school and now he's years out of college. Uh, he's putting out an album. He was reviewed in a um, uh, magazine in London. Mm. And, um, you know, it's uh, uh, somebody said, that's nowhere on your website. Why wouldn't you want to put a success, put a, uh, a link to his one of his videos? Uh, he's done a yeah. number of music videos, put a link to his album. Um, and I'm going, yeah, that's just wasted opportunity. I haven't I haven't done it yet. Sure. Yeah. So um, yeah, we're going to talk about content marketing in a little bit. That's uh, definitely a, a 
piece of content that would be a great story to tell and share to show success of one of your students for sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, again, I just want to reiterate, <laughs> I, I get it. I've been there where, you know, I own a small business and, um, Sometimes the last stuff you do is your own stuff because you're focused on doing work for your students, or your clients or whatever. So, um, but, it, you know, it, it's part of the gig and, uh, you know, to keep your stuff updated and put fresh stuff out there is, it's going to help. Hey, Ben, I yeah. have time to say something. Sure, please. Um, so what I was interested in hearing from this presentation is I'm a newer business and I want to basically... Um, I need help with branding, like how to put our message into content that people see online to make us more like a credible source or know what they can come to us for. I think the correct word from that is branding. I come from a healthcare background, so I don't actually know the correct terms that are used in marketing, but yeah. that's what I want to do is like establish that good um, trusting relationship with the clients that people see online. I want to be that credible source and basically just bring like the emotion that we stand for towards the customers into um, what they see online. I have yeah. no idea. So I hear all this enhancing your presence and I have the website, I have the Google My Business set up, I have social media, but I don't know what the heck to put on social media sure. to do that. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard cool. to bring that forward. Yeah, cool. Yeah, awesome stuff. Great questions, cool feedback. Um, we'll. Hopefully some of the stuff that we'll be talking about in the second half here will uh, maybe spark some ideas. I think what you're talking about definitely is part of your brand for sure, creating, you know, a brand reputation. Uh, you know, the essence of your brand can be, uh, you know, what you do and how you help people for sure. I think you're also talking a little bit about um, creating some affinity, um, some um, preference for people to learn about you or interact with you. And uh, when you talk about building trust, um, you know, there's real opportunities, certainly through things like online content marketing and, you know, the stuff you put out on social media and all that for sure. Um, but there might be some cool opportunity between like partnerships and collaboration and stuff, which we'll talk about in a little bit too, to, you know, leverage somebody else's presence to give your presence credibility, right? So um, yeah, let's just, let's dive in um, for the sake of time. I'll, I'll keep rolling, but Awesome. Thank you both for sharing. Uh, so um, search engine marketing, um, this will be the last uh, thing related to Google and search engines that I'll talk about tonight, I think. Um, but this is a really important part of a, a marketing strategy too. Um, and, and this is one that uh, at the very least, your site structure, um, the some of the, you know, the words and the content that you have on your site um, can contribute to being discovered via a search engine. Search engine marketing in particular is something that usually comes in the form of search ads, um, you know, that you see like the above the non-paid or organic results. Um, and for a newer business, well, I mean, really for any business, but particularly for a newer business, but even, you know, ones that have been around for a while, search engine marketing can really change the game quite a bit, you know, if you're effectively using it um, by um, maximizing, you um, keywords and using high word key values that are keywords that um, align with your business and what you do and your business's goals and stuff. So there's some amazing tools to do keyword research out there. Google has some free stuff. There's lots of paid services. Um, so, you know, this all has to fit into the mix of everything that you're doing. So you know, it's something that you need to have time for to do and do well, but lots of cool opportunity um, to optimize your site for discoverability and for um, search engine recognition, um, and also some cool opportunity to do some testing, like A-B testing, and to learn, um, you know, what's working, what's not, what I might need to change, what needs to keep going because it's actually driving traffic or whatever. So um, it's all, at the end of the day, it's about like leveraging um, analytics and insights to optimize your site and um, hopefully reach your targeted audience and drive qualified um, traffic to your, to your site that hopefully winds up resulting in business or sales or information being shared, whatever it is that you're trying to do. So content marketing, this is where I think Miranda, this might be um, something that um, is a next step for you, whether it's on social media or on your site. Uh, Mark, you know, the story you shared as well, I think, you know, doing some 
using some of your successes uh, to create some content to put out there is an, an amazing way to help let people know how what you do provides value or changes lives or whatever it is that you know that um, uh, you might be telling people and I'll just pause for a second and say that that really is an important step too to all of this stuff is understanding your value proposition or you know how you help people like what what you do um, might just be something perceived as teaching someone how to play the banjo. But, you know, the example that Mark gave, you know, this person went on to have an amazing career, you know, that that might not be every single story, but that's certainly a story that you can tell. Um, maybe all that happened, and again, not to pick on Mark or um, embarrass him or anything like that, but maybe all that happened is he taught somebody how to play the guitar. And one day they played that guitar at their son's wedding or something you know and I mean imagine like how special a moment like that is and so the value that Mark's selling is sure it's guitar lessons and stuff like that but the result of that is a super emotional really important moment in someone's life so you know to understand what you do and the true value that that does for human beings for people because at the end of the day that's what we're all doing is we're serving people we're providing something to people that saves them time, saves them money, or improves their lives in some way. We need to be really clear about how what we do does that and then bring that into the mix of all this stuff, your content, your social media posts and all that. So um, content marketing, an excellent tool for um, helping to uh, drive traffic, build search engine optimi optimization and all of those things that we've already talked about. Um, sharing educational and, inform and informative content, um, like what Tina had mentioned earlier, uh, definitely fits into the mix of content marketing. Um, and this really helps build brand loyalty and increases the likelihood of repeat visitors or repeat businesses or referrals by um, offering valuable content, you know, things like um, uh, ebooks or white papers or webinars or just business information, how to cut uh, type of stuff. Um, you can really share this in a way that um, prospects have, um, you know, like no choice but to interact with you almost because, you know, they're they're going to gain something just by consuming the thing that you're sharing. And you can do this in a way where you can um, require prospects to enter contact information before they get it. This people this is called uh, gated content. Um, that's not for everyone. Um, you know, that can definitely be a turnoff if I, you know, click a button thinking I'm going to get some freebie or some helpful tool or tip uh, and I have to enter my email address or phone number to get it. People might be like, nope, don't want anything to do with that. So not that's that might not be for every business or for every kind of person, but there are also some where, you know, if the value's there and it's like, shoot, I'll give you my email address if that means I get this how-to thing that's going to tell me exactly how to do the thing that I'm trying to do. Um, and, you know, some might wonder, well, if I put educational stuff out there or show too much of what I do or how I do it, people might feel like they don't need my help or I'm giving away too much info or something. Uh, and at the end of the day, like you need to be comfortable with what you're sharing and, um, you know, how much information you're giving. But the likely outcome of that scenario is that people see you as a leader in your field or an expert or, you know, a professional, uh, and then they ask for your help or they buy your product or your service or not even try to do it themselves. Uh, but that is the thing that can happen if you're sharing educational content or, you know, how to's tips and tricks or whatever, you know, I mean, Mark could show how to play the first and how to, I don't play the guitar, but maybe the first three chords on the guitar. That sounds like I know what I'm talking about. I don't, um, but um, you know, that might be a little bit too much information that might make somebody pick up a guitar and think like, yeah, this is the thing I can do, but then, what likely happens is they hit the wall and they realize, okay, I can't do this thing by myself. I need to call Mark. He's got to give me some lessons. So, so sharing a bit of information, educating people, you know, right in that sweet spot, which again is really up to you. A lot of times it's just the comfort level that you have to give away information uh, is an awesome source for lots of content that people care about and see lots of value in. Um, and, you know, peels back the curtain a little bit and maybe shows who you are, what you do, how you help people. Um, so, I mean, all of these topics that we're talking about, again, like content marketing, that's something that we could talk about all night. Um, but um, just for the sake of time, we just we just can't. But um, content marketing really is a powerful, a really, really powerful strategy that supports online client marketing by um, building credibility, 
driving traffic to wherever you're wanting it to go, your website, your social media, um, nurturing relationships, and then supporting uh, lead generation or, you know, building prospects, right? So, and it really helps businesses um, establish a strong online presence by, you know, engaging uh, with people somewhere in the, in the buyer's journey. So um, I'm going to share just a couple of uh, examples that I think are um, cool when I mentioned like peeling back the curtain. Um, I'm a super fan of Quick Trip and uh, not only their food and their gasoline, but their social media and stuff like that. But um, this is a cool post that they did um, that is actually kind of a little bit of a joke. Hopefully it loads up here, but um, this is them like teasing you that they're going to show you what lives behind the freezer. And then they did this nice little edit here where you open the freezer and it's actually showing part of their ice cream manufacturing process or something. Obviously that's not what's inside every quick trip store, but um, you know, lots of businesses will do this where they'll show part of their manufacturing process or they'll show, uh, you know, I mean, honestly, even for using quick trip as the example to like see what the backside of their counter looked like and see how much stuff is back there what their tech setup looks like like that'd be interesting to me you know and at the end of the day what you're doing there is you're like humanizing a business you're showing like hey they you know we all go to quick trip maybe not all of us speaking for myself we go to quick trip we buy an ice cream or whatever um, but to like see how it's made like this like that's really interesting to me and you know it shows like you know isn't just magic and shows up on the shelves. There's people uh, and equipment and processes behind uh, what they do. Um, another example from Quick Trip, they do a podcast. And this post, all that it is is 10 seconds of their recording process. Um, so if you're, you know, putting any kind of content out there or, you know, a product out there or something, um, to show people a bit of how you do it. You know, I'm, I imagine there's plenty of listeners to their podcast that um, think it's some grandiose production inside a studio that's really technical and um, full of soundproofing and stuff like that. Um, I mean, they're clearly in a studio here, but um, at the end of the day, it's like a couple people with some microphones on a table. Um, so, you know, you're just, again, creating a human connection to people by peeling back the curtain a little bit. And the one on the right, I think is just absolutely funny. Um, I Maybe the next um, session that I'll do with Zia and the gang, I'll, uh, I'll show you guys my setup or what my desk looks like. It's a little cleaner than this one, but, you know, just like being a bit vulnerable and showing people who you are and how you do things or maybe how messy your desk is. Um, this can be a source for content um, and create a connection to people. Um, so, you know, again, depending on your business and what you can actually show people, um, that might be a really cool opportunity to um, show people what you do, how you do it, uh, and then just can be a conversation starter to um, engage with people. So, um, you know, a lot of the stuff that we talked about today are um, ways to like put a message out there and um, get information out to people. Um, and likely, or what should be a goal of that is to get people to come back to you some way by engaging with you, giving you a call or visiting your website, maybe, um, maybe even just creating a moment in their brain that says, okay, I need to uh, keep an eye on them, or I need to click the follow button or whatever, so that they see more of you. Um, those are all, you know, opportunities for people to engage with you. And then hopefully you wind up acquiring them as a, as a client or a customer, but um, just a few that are really key opportunities to create um, engagement or create a customer acquisition opportunity um, on your website landing pages. So this can be really as simple as being mindful of the page that you're directing people to. So if you're, um, you know, posting something on social media or um, updating the link on your Google listing or something, you know, most likely that's your home page. But if for some reason you want people discovering that to go to a specific page on your website, um, just being mindful of where you want people to go, what page you want them to land on. It can really be as simple as that. You might not need to create a new page, but uh, that said, it's a really, really effective tool to point people to a page, a specific page that maybe you need to create, most likely you need to create. Um, that's specific to the product or the campaign that you're talking about. And this gives you the ability to craft that page to be as 
captivating as possible to get people to do the thing that you're trying to make them do. Um, and uh, by it being its own standalone page, then you can also measure the results the easiest. You can see how many people have visited that page, how many people have exited your site from that page and lots of other helpful info like that. Um, and you can create a structure to do some really cool testing to see what, what works best too. So um, landing pages are just a really, I think, um, understated, really helpful tool when it comes to uh, engaging with people and creating an acquisition opportunity. Site referrals. So um, Miranda, this is also maybe an opportunity for you to, um, I, I guess, really the next two site referrals and then connection and, you know, working with other people. Um, anytime that people come to your website from another website is mega for uh, search engine optimization uh, benefits. Um, and, you know, if it's something that's organic, like a partner that you have or another trusted business or something that's pointing people uh, to your website from theirs, um, that's a real opportunity uh, for people to see, hey, this, whether it's true or not, this business trusts the business that I'm looking into right now, or I, I stumbled upon this business from this other business's site that I trust. So immediately there's some, some trust there and a relationship being built. So effectively leveraging website referrals can really help a business strengthen their online presence and achieve goals and things like that. So um, right into the next one, building connections with other businesses and leveraging each other's resources like your social media audience or your website and just your business's reputation is a huge way to expand your reach. Um, it's not easy because uh, if it's going to be real and it's a real relationship and a real collaboration, like it's got to be rooted in trust, right? So, um, you know, connect with a business that you trust and have a good relationship with or start building that now. Start to build a relationship with someone that might maybe receive a mutual benefit if you helped each other, if you were each like driving traffic to each other's websites or social media pages or something. So, you know, maybe it's a supplier of yours. Maybe it's just, you know, if you're, um, you know, I don't know anybody here that might be like a business with a physical location. Maybe it's a business in close proximity to you, like on Main Street or whatever. Um, and in almost every case that businesses work together like that, and it's intentional and a like honest and real trustworthy relationship, uh, everybody benefits because of it. So, you know, don't forget about um, uh, just good old fashioned collaboration and partnership. That's a huge opportunity. And specifically when it comes to online marketing, um, that website to website traffic is just, it's golden when it comes to uh, search engine optimization. So, and then I put this last one on there because I think it's one that also just kind of gets forgotten about um, often. Like, don't forget about a simple sweepstakes or something to drive engagement, you know, give your product or your discount or a, a discount of your services as the reward. Um, I mean, at the very least, you might gain a new client because someone won that contest. Um, but along the way, you, you create a ton of excitement and opportunity to talk about what you do and how you help people and the value that you provide. Um, and like the possibility of winning is fun, you know, all along the way, right? And you can DIY these things, you know, depending on what kind of business you are, there might be things you need to keep in mind, like disclosures and regulation and things like that. But um, uh, there are some online tools too to help you with some of that stuff, like how to do it and prove that you're, you know, doing a sweep, uh, sweepstakes or a contest um, in a, uh, ethical way and you're not just you know giving your buddy the uh thing that you're giving away you know so like doing it like true random drawing or whatever there's some really cool tools and easy tools gleam.io and votigo.com are two that i've used in the past that just give you that mechanism to um i mean they have some tools to help run the sweepstakes itself but then identifying a winner and stuff um so again just a i guess a bonus one that i wanted to throw in because i think it's one that's valuable and kind of easy uh, to pull off. Um, so every, everything we've talked about so many things tonight and almost everything that we talk about has some kind of visual aspect to it. Um, I always like to just pause for a minute and talk about brand. Um, don't forget about these really important aspects of what you do. Um, and if you don't have a logo or if the logo that you have is something that you created yourself once upon a time or something, that's okay. That's your brand. That's what you have right now. Maybe there's opportunity for improvement there, but um, it's 
brand is so much more than just your logo as well. So the experience you provide, the colors that you use, the way you talk, your voice, uh, and that's something that, you know, again, uh, definitely sounding like a broken record, we could probably spend a whole hour on brand voice and um, how people perceive your business based on the words that you use and the tone that you use when you speak or write content. Um, lots of um, things to keep in mind when it comes to just keeping your brand top of mind. And uh, at the end of the day, what you're trying to do is create a reliable experience and hopefully one that, um, you know, your clients and potential clients like really a brand uh, is the perception of the people that you're hoping or uh, that do buy from you. you know, brand is so much more than logo and fonts and things like that. But um, a brand lives in the hearts and minds of the people that we're serving or hoping to serve. The way that they perceive you is really your brand. So um, one thing that I also didn't talk to uh, talk about tonight um, that could be a really helpful tool with almost everything that we've talked about is how AI is sneaking into everybody's uh, work nowadays, uh, chat GPT being the one that's gotten the most coverage, um, but there's lots of tools popping up, um, some that are free, some that are paid. Uh, I uh, won't throw anyone under the bus or anything, but I would say some that are ethical, some that are not. Um, I think that there's huge opportunity to improve workflow, create efficiency, create inspiration, uh, and use AI as a really helpful tool. Um, like ChatGPT is the most logical example. I mean, to, to use that as a tool to help you write something, I think there's a ton of power there, um, but there is also a ton of um, um, threat there to um, not so much like ChatGPT is going to take over the world or uh, eat my computer or anything like that, but um, to you know use it in a way that's borderline or maybe truly plagiarism or uh, inaccurate or not factual. Um, ChatGPT gives lots of warnings saying that what it kicks back to you might not be uh, entirely accurate or fact-based. So um, just another thing that I would say, proceed with caution. It's very new. It's changing in like incredibly rapidly. Uh, who knows what's going to come about to help keep it ethical, um, to make it regulated, whatever that looks like. But um, also like, don't be afraid to at least learn about it. And maybe don't be afraid to test and try some things. Just um, know that it's uh, a powerful tool that uh, I don't think too many people have figured out quite yet. So another session that we could spend an hour on is how AI fits into the marketing mix. But um, so we're just a few minutes past five. Um, I did my best to keep things high enough level, not get too far stuck down into the weeds. But if there are any weeds that anyone wants to dive into or any specific questions or anything, I'll happily take them uh, now. I'm sorry, you said any questions? I, I think anything, anything that I feel comfortable answering, yeah. Um, do you guys have any small business development center classes on content marketing for businesses? I'll let Zia take that one. Okay, yeah. Um, so, I mean, it really depends on the centers um, and funding. And so it, again, also depends on, you know, um, instructor connections. So for instance, you know, I knew Ben from, when we did a full conference, a full digital media conference. Um, actually, Tina is also one of our um, Excel instructors um, that I usually reach out to. So again, um, we just have different connections and depending on those connections and their specialties and what our funding um, we have available, that's how, the type of stuff that we can produce. Uh, but definitely something that I um, did jot down as something we we'll want to probably do in the future. Um, I think I put that brand voice, also AI content marketing, because I did see that pop up on my feed. Uh, and that uh, is something that I'm interested. Um, I think, and I'm sure that a lot of people are also interested is that AI content marketing, you know, AI producing some of those content. So where, you know, how does that all work out? So I, I do have a few notes jotted down. So <laughs> yes. Sounds good. Thank you. <laughs> Awesome. 
Well, thanks everyone for the time tonight. I uh, really had a lot of fun uh, and learning about all of you, like that's the best part of the gig for sure. So thanks Mark and Tina and everyone that's shared a bit about uh, who you are and what you do. And then um, everyone, thank you so much for coming. I will um, send out a follow-up email. Um, it will include a, it will include the recording. Um, I'll also have a survey. So if you have time, please, please, um, fill that survey. Again, that helps us with future programming. Again, what content you want to see. Um, so if you do uh, have a chance, um, do fill out the form. Anybody that didn't attend Tuesday's session, you know, again, um, reach out to me, email me. I will send you a recording of that um, session. Um, I will also send link to um, the, um, Exclamation Services website. Um, also a website to SBDC um, because we also have other um, courses um, throughout the network that you can also tap into and um, register for. So that will all be coming tomorrow morning. Um, but if you do have any questions, you know, feel free to reach out to myself or Ben. So thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye, everyone. Thank you.